Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to paint on glass. Uh, this has been something a few people have asked me about and so I thought I would jump on this tutorial and uh, get, get this going for you. Uh, we are going to talk about how we prepare our glass for painting and how we, um, how we do our design. One of our designs, I've done quite a few different designs for the wine glasses, um, but I will show you one of them today and then I will talk about how we cure it to ensure that um, it lasts when you're washing it. Uh, it is um, hand wash or top rack dishwasher safe once you've cured it properly. So uh, depending on your multi-surface glass or multi-surface paint that you're using, um, it may the, the curing process may vary a little bit. So make sure you're reading the instructions on your paint. But I will show you what the curing process is for the Deco Art Folk Art multi-surface paint, which is what we're going to use today. So. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different designs. So this is the mandala that we did with the step-by-step -step mandala on the stone. So this is a really great one. Um, it's perfect size for the front of your wine glass if you're looking for that. Um, this is one of my favorite designs, um, which is creating your, your dots from, all, from the bottom and then going up. The reason I love this one so much is because it creates this really cool kaleidoscope inside the glass. Um, when you're drinking from it. So I really love that. But today we are going, this is another one of my favorites and this is the one that we're going to do today. So this one um, has sayings on it. It's probably backwards on your video, but I am going to sh get, um, put the printable download um, in the description below. Um, I created these graphics and then I had a girlfriend um, who has the Cricut machine uh, create the, the stickers for me. So if you know anyone or you have one, then this is really cool. Um, if make, they make really awesome gifts. So I will put that in the printable or in the description below so that you have that free download um, if you want it. So I'm going to show you how to do that glass today and um, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is make sure our glass is really clean. If you have any oils or dust on it, um, that's going to prevent the... Um, paint from really adhering to it and and creating that long lasting ones you'll have dots that are popping off of it um, after some time so I just use I actually found these just at the dollar store and it's uh, rubbing alcohol but it's got a little um, pump thing on here so I just take my cotton swab and I give it a few little pumps and I have my rubbing alcohol on there and I just give it a good clean all around the surface that I'm going to be working on here. So I want to make sure that that's really spotless. I've had, unfortunately, some beautiful wine glasses that prior to know this knowledge um, didn't last as long as I had hoped just because um, this step was not, was not taken. So now I always make sure that I do that um, just because you don't want you don't want all your hard work to uh, not last very long. Okay, so now that we have our wine glass nice and clean and prepped and ready to go, um, you can choose your colors. It really doesn't matter how many colors you choose. Um, I would probably only choose maybe you know five or six at the most. You don't even have to do that many if you like. Um, it's a pretty straightforward design and it's going to look different um, no matter how many colors you choose or don't choose. Um, so we're going to get started here. Uh, one of the first things I do want to talk about is the paint choices. So you do want to make sure that any paint colors that you do choose are multi-surface paint. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, the Deco Arc Americana. Um, it has to say multi-surface on there, otherwise it's not guaranteed that it's going to actually last through washing. Um, so all of my paint colors that I've chosen today do say multi-surface and uh, that's what's going to be your best option for painting on glass. Now a couple of things painting on glass as opposed to painting on something that's a solid surface is that we can't really create guidelines on here because once you put a dot on that guideline um, when you're doing a solid color or a solid surface you're not going to see that guideline whereas this if you put a dot on here. I'm going to show you this one glass here. Um, if you put a dot on 
here to create your center dot and then you put this dot on top of it, you can't erase it and you are going to see it through on the other side of the glass because it is clear. So we can't really put guidelines on our glass. Um, if you were doing a coffee mug um, that had, was solid and not clear, then you could probably get away with doing that. Um, but because we are working on clear glass here, um, we're not going to be able to do that. So you have a couple options. You can most definitely eyeball it, um, or you can, if you're, if you're not comfortable doing that or not confident, um, you can use um, a flexible sewing measuring tape and kind of get an idea of where your, your center is. Now we're going to be doing, because we're doing the design that has the large circle in the middle to put your um, your letters or you know if you don't want to put letters you could also do a small mandala flower or something in the center of that it doesn't have to be words but I'm going to show you how to do the ring so that you can put something in the middle so what I've done is I've just created a circle template just from a piece of cardstock or paper um, and what we're going to do is we're going to place that we're going to just tape it onto our uh, wine glass and that's going to create our template to be able to start our first ring. Once we have that first ring, we can really um, discard that and because um, it doesn't need to be on there. Now we've got our, our, temp, our temp, first ring for our design. So I'm just gonna tape this on here. Okay, so what I've done is I've just placed the circle, taped it into kind of that middle portion of the glass, try to center it. Um, this is where you can kind of um, tape it and then eyeball it, look at it, make sure you know, you've got it in a really good spot that you're gonna be able to put your ring all the way around and then you can lift it, move it until you got it right. Um, as you can see, because the wine glass is curved, our, our um, paper doesn't stay flat on the surface. So as we go along, we're just going to press with our finger all the way down and around to make sure that we get that perfect circle. So I am going to choose, you can really choose any smaller um, tool. I am going to use, I have my toothpick, just so you have a bit of a gauge. I have my toothpick tool and then I have one size up and then I have the next size. So that's the size that I'm going to use um, for my first ring. And you can choose your color, pick whichever color you like. And you're just going to start with one and you're going to go around your ring. So you're going to go follow your guideline of your, um, your little piece of paper. And they're just going to go in side by side all the way around. Again, remembering to push down on your paper as you're coming along, going along that way, just to make sure that you're getting that perfect circle. And you're going to go all the way around your circle doing the exact same thing. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone all the way around my circle template. I will put Ost on here um, on the side, the size of the diameter of my circle, but that's really going to depend on the size of your wine glass. This is a large red wine glass, um, so that can kind of give you an indication, but um, really you can just kind of figure out by the size of your glass, what um, what diameter of a, of a circle you need. So very, very carefully, we are going to take off our template. Okay, so there you have it. This is our first circle of our wine glass. And it's perfectly circle and it's ready for, it's going to be uh, ready for our fun little design on the inside. So next we're going to just take that same size tool, but we're gonna just choose a different color. Um, and I will post my paint colors again on the side, just so that if you are wanting to 
use this color palette, you'll have all the colors that you need on there. So we're going to do the same thing all the way around. It's just going to be your basic ring, but we're going in the valleys of all of the dots that we just created. And you're going to do this all the way around. Okay, so we've done our second ring. As you can see here, we're going to choose our third color, but we're also going to step up one size from your tool that you were just using. We're going to bump it up just a little bit um, to create that slightly bigger dot. Um, just to note too that glass is, is hard to work on. It's difficult to work on, especially if you're on the clear surface when you're trying to look through it. For sure um, you can definitely put in some tissue paper if that helps um, create um, a better visual for you um, as you can see here um, once you've done it a few times it becomes a little bit easier but for your first couple of times you might want to do that or put a piece of paper in there just so that you have um, a little bit of a better visual for your guidelines um, if you flub up which I've done many times um, glass is really easy to fix as well for that so if you've got you know whatever paint you've got on there and it smudges really quick fix is just take your little cotton swab that you had um, your rubbing alcohol on and just give it a little wipe and it's gone and you can start again so feel free also to just pause the video at any time if I'm going too fast I am pausing it between rings just so that the video doesn't take too long so that's probably a great time for you to pause it as well and finish up your ring and then come back. So again, we're taking up our tool just one size slightly. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did, which is putting dots in between each of your rings. You want to make sure all your dots are pretty even around um, the same ring when you're doing the same color. So that means you're pretty much dipping each each time. If we were doing descending knots, which I have done in my other videos, where you just dip one time and and then continue to, to dab your tool, um, that creates that descending dot, but that's not what we want here. We want nice even dots all the way around. So you're gonna be dipping your tool each and every time to make sure that your dots are consistent. So I'm gonna go all the way around here and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm going to take my wooden dowel. This is my next tool. So if you don't have a wooden dowel, you do something similar. You, if you only have your styluses, you can do a, a stylus that's about, about the same size. Because these ones are just going to be a little bit bigger. They're not as big as my thumbtack tool, which off, you'll often see. You can see that it's... Uh, quite a bit smaller, but that'll give you kind of a gauge of what size we're using next. I want to show you another thing here too for if for mess ups, because I do that, I do it a lot. So I want to make sure that everybody has the tips and tricks because it happens quite often, um, most often with almost every project I do. So if you have a really tiny little um, paint smudge or something that needs to be cleaned up and and the q-tip is just going to be too big and you're feeling like it's going to mess up your work let it dry till it's about you know three quarters of the way dry not fully and then you can take your metal toothpick and you can just scrape it off those little smudges tend to dry pretty quickly anyway um, but you can just scrape it off really gently and then it's good to go just another little trick Okay, so we're going to take our next color. This is where it's going to get a bit tricky. Um, you can most definitely let this part dry and use um, a ruler if you feel like that'll be better for you, but I'm going to just eyeball it here. So we are going to go on the top of our glass and create a dot. And then we're going to go on the bottom so this is where you're going to try and eyeball it a little bit here. Doing the same thing. And we're going to do 
side to side as well. So that's going to give us our guidelines for this next set of rings that we're doing. So we are going to do these dots. They're going to be separated because we are going to do the descending dots. I'm going to show you here on one of these. See how these um, larger dots here are, are quite a bit apart. They're about three-ish dots from our previous ring apart and that's what we're going to try and do here so you're just going to even them out depending on the size of your ring and depending on the tool that you're using now it's going to give you an idea of how many dots you just want to make sure you have enough space that you're going to be able to do some descending dots details around them so you can add so for in this one i'll probably do three but you could do four uh, it just really depends on the space that you have so what I'm going to do, because I want to do three, I'm going to do one in the middle of these two that I've just created. And then I'm going to do one in the middle of those as well. And that's going to give you your even spacing. And I'm going to do that on the other ones here too. So I'm putting a dot in the middle. And then I'm putting a dot in the middle of those spaces. And I'm going to do that on the bottom here as well. Okay, so as you can see, all of my larger dots are all done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tool that's one step up from the toothpick. So it's still small, but it's not quite as small as the toothpick. And I'm going to take white. If you have a different color, go for it. This is where we're going to do our descending dots on um, around these larger rings. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, you can take whichever color it is that you're using, and you're going to put a dot at the end of each larger circle like this. This is going to help make sure that you're You've got that center dot when you're doing all of your descending dots. So you're going to go all the way around. If you find like some of your dots may start running, if you've got a runnier paint um, and you need to, and, and you're finding that they're starting to drip a little bit, um, do a couple and then just take a hair dryer lightly to it just to, just to cure it just a little bit. If you get that, that top part of it, um, dry it, it almost just like a surface skin type of on the on the top of your dot then you're gonna find that your drip is not gonna or you're gonna be pretty safe from drips so I can see here for my blue that some of it is starting to it hasn't it hasn't quite broken free of the the perfect circle so sometimes I will also if I've got the time I'll just sit here and I'll move it around a little bit until those those the top skin of that paint there um, dries a little bit and then i know i've i'm safe from the drips and then i can keep carrying on so i'm actually going to take the hair dryer to it just so that we can carry on with our video and i will be right back okay so i just took blow dryer to it a little bit just to make sure that my my larger dots don't drip if you are using a hair dryer, just um, a couple reminders not to go too close to the surface of where you're painting. Um, you want to kind of keep it at a distance. You just want kind of that warm air just to um, set your paint. Um, otherwise, if you get too close and it gets too hot, your paint can bubble. Um, I've had that happen where all of a sudden my paint is doing this and it's bubbling and that's not what you want. Or you're going to risk um, blowing that thinner paint um, and having it do exactly what you don't want it to do, which is which is um, move out of your perfect circle. Okay, so we are going all the way around with our white or whichever color you've chosen, again, on our bigger dots. Okay, so now my top dots are all done all the way around, as you can see. And I'm going to take that same color and same tool. 
and we are going to be jipping just once starting on one side of the dots we just created and dabbing all the way around to create that descending dot again like i said earlier we're just dipping one time um, this creates that descending dot whereas these ones when we were dipping each time we were creating that circle to keep that consistent size this is where we want it to uh, continuously get smaller so we're going to do that all the way around Okay, so I've gone all the way around on one side with the descending dots, and now we're gonna go on the other side of our circle in the exact same way. And we're gonna do this all the way around. Okay, so I've gone all the way around all of my larger dots here. And we're gonna take our white um, again and use that same tool and I want to create a more distinct um, inner ring just so that it's really separate from what we're going to do in the center here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white now that my blue is probably pretty dry and we're going to go in the valleys on this side we're just creating small white dots all the way around in those same valley, the same valley of that we just did on the other side with the other color, but in a smaller dot. So we're going to go all the way around and do this. Okay, so I finished that inner circle. You can see how the white dots have just kind of brought out the ring a little bit more. Now we're going to let this first layer of our uh, circles really dry again you can use the hair dryer or you can just give it some time and come back to the video uh, we want to make sure that this is all really dry before we're now adding our second layer of colors okay so my paints pretty dry here now so I'm going to do what we're going to do now is we're going to do our second layer of colors I'm going to show you here again on my glass how we're going to add a second layer of color into our dots around here. So you can choose the same colors that you've had. You can choose new colors if you haven't used colors. Like I haven't used my purple yet, so that's what I'm going to use here. Um, you want to have some nice contrast in your colors, um, or you can use a lighter color. Uh, with dot painting, um, more often than not, you're going to start with your darker colors and work your way up to lighter colors that kind of gives you that 3d effect um, if you're working i find if you're working with lighter colors and then you're adding darker colors they tend to start looking like little eyes <laughs> little eyeballs so we want to steer away from that so typically what you're going to do with any of your designs is start with your darker colors and then work your way up to lighter colors um, it is fun when you've done like a white and then you do like a bright color on top um those can be really fun but typically um on on your average uh, design you're going to do dark and then work your way up to light or you're going to do just a super fun pop of a different color which is what i'm going to do here so um i'm going to start with my larger dots because i'm going to use my purple here what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a color a tool that's one size smaller than the tool that i used to create these dots because we don't want it to be the same size. We want it to be just a bit smaller. So I'm using my purple. And I'm just gonna go right in the center of my blue dots. So you want to make sure that blue is still showing but you want to have a good a good size dot because we're going to do actually a third layer on these ones so you want to make sure that you've got enough space for your third dot as well so we're going to go around all of our ring doing the same thing 
Okay, as you can see here, I've gone all the way around with my purple and gives it really that fun pop of color. I also took the hair dryer to that as well, um, just to make sure that we're not getting any any little drips. Um, when you are working on such a curve, um, it can be a challenge to make sure that your paint isn't, your, your, your circle isn't getting lopsided by the slight drips of um, the paint. So next we're gonna take, um, you can choose whichever color you like, and we're going to um, create a second dot, second layer of dots on the rings that we originally made. So because I've used this one to create those, I'm gonna use my, my one dot down in order to create the, this uh, next dot. Because again, I want to make sure that I can still see the dot underneath. Okay, so I'm going to take my purple again, and I'm going to go onto my blue. And I'm just putting a dot in the middle of each of those blue dots. And you want to keep it pretty consistent. Sometimes when you're doing smaller dots, depending on how much paint you have on your stylus, you might be able to get away with doing two dots and keeping them consistent size. Otherwise, just uh, keep dipping and dotting. So we'll go all the way around with this. Okay, so I've done, I've gone all the way around with my purple and now I'm going to choose my next color and keeping with the same tool and I'm going to, for me, it's kind of that purpley gray color. I'm going to pick my next color and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to be putting a dot in the center of each one. So I think I'm going to choose the aqua to do that. And we're going to go all the way around. Okay, so I've gone all the way around in my second layer and second ring of dots. Now I'm going to do my third um, ring and I'm going to be moving up one tool size, which is one size smaller than this aqua ring that I've made, but it's the same tool that I used for the rings previous. I'm going to use my white for this one. I'm going to bring some more white into this design here. So I'm going to go all the way around again. So this just brings out that, that contrast a little bit here. Pretty simple to design, going all the way around. So we bring out the complexity with, with the color changes. Okay, so I've got my second layer of colors on all those three rings, and now I'm going to add one more color layer to my bigger my bigger dots so again i'm going to choose a tool that is a bit smaller than the one that i used to create that purple dot all the way around again okay so there you have it that's our basic design for around the ring around now if you are going to put your um, vinyl in the center this is where you would stop now 
and let this cure. So what you're going to do is you get to have to let the paint dry. I typically, I think the bottle says let it dry for an hour. I like to leave it overnight to make sure that this paint is super dry. Um, if you try to cure it and bake it before the paint is fully dry, you're going to get bubbles in your paint because it, um, it's not quite dry enough and the bubbles will start popping through and you'll kind of get this weird um, texture in your paint. So I tend to leave my glasses overnight to make sure that this paint is really dry before I cure it. Now, if you're going to be using um, a vinyl, like if you, if you are going to put words on it, this is where you're going to stop. You're going to let this paint dry and then you're going to um, cure it. And I am going to tell you how to cure that right at the end. Um, but because not everyone has access to the Cricut um, or vinyl stickers of any sort, um, I'm going to do a center mandala on this one. And um, again, so once your, your glass is cured, you can put your vinyl on it. You don't want to put your vinyl on it before you're um, baking it to cure it. So we're going to do an inside design here, uh, just so that if you're choosing not to do the words, you kind of get an idea of what we're going to do. And then, then you would let this dry and uh, have it ready to be cured. Okay, so what we're going to do now is you want to probably let this part dry pretty good because we don't want to be messing it up with our hands when you're trying to do um, the center. So let let that dry or take the hair dryer to it and then um, come back when when that's pretty much dry, if not fully dry. Okay, so I kind of I want to mimic with my center dot um, my my dots that I've created around the outside of the ring. So I'm going to start with I'm going to use my thumbtack because I want a, a, a larger center dot. And again, you're going to have to eyeball this, but if not, again, you can use your, um, your flexible measuring tape to decide. So this is about six centimeters in diameter. That's about the size of my, my template there. So you can kind of gauge, again, you don't want to put a, anything there like a dot like a pencil line or a chalk line because that will show through on the other side so you're gonna have to eyeball it a little bit but again now that this is dry if you mess up in here so I'm gonna just show you here if that was not perfect perfectly centered I wasn't happy with it again I'm just gonna take my my wipe careful not to really touch around the outside paint too much but you'll be able to wipe that clean so there's my center dot now i'm going to take my tool that's one size up from my toothpick size and i'm going to do my dots on the top bottom and side to side there and then I'm going to again take that same tool same paint and I'm going to put a dot in the center of each of those Take the same paint and same tool again and do another dot in the center of each of those. And that's going to create our full ring around this center dot. So now I'm going to go up one tool size and choose another color and I'm going to go in between all of those dots again in that little valley 
and just go all the way around. Okay, so I've got my next layer of circles all the way around. And now I'm going to choose my next color. So I've chosen my next color. I'm going to actually go up um, two sizes here. So I was using this size here, and I'm going to actually go up. Actually, I'm going to go up another quite a bit, so about a four or five sizes up, because I want to now create um, a few larger circles here, larger dots. So then I'm going to go on the top and bottom here. Hmm. This is just in the valley of those dots that we just created. And I'm going to go on the sides as well. And I'm also going to go in between. Okay, so now I've got my gray dots. I just uh, stood it up just to make sure that all of my dots were even and uh, even in size and even in shape around the, the ring. So now I'm going to take my metal toothpick or you can take your wooden toothpick if you don't have the metal one. And I'm going to pick a color here. I think I'm gonna pick the turquoise. Actually, you know what? We're going to go one size up first to create a dot at the center or at the top of each of these big dots. So we want that pretty defined. So let's do that first. Okay, so now we've gone around and we've got our little bit larger dot. Um, on the center of those. So we're going to take our same color, but we're gonna use our toothpick this time. We just want some smaller dots, descending dots all the way down on each side. So we're going to do that all the way around. Okay, and now we're going to do it on the other side of these larger dots. We're going to go down the exact same way on the other side, all the way around. Okay, so I've gone all the way around with my color here. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to do one more layer of the descending dots. I'm going to use white just to make it really stand out. And then we're going to also do um, some added layers into our center dots as well. So I'm going to go back to using my one step up from my toothpick size to put in those top center dots again.
And I'm going to use my toothpick with the same color, same white here. And do those descending dots again. All around one side and then down on the other side. Okay, so I've gone all the way around with my tiny, tiny little white dots. And now I'm going to work on my center dots. So now that my um, my larger center stone or dot is dry, I'm going to add in that purple. Because again, I want to make it the same as the larger dots on the outside ring here. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it in up that close, but there's a teeny tiny little purple drip that just went into my blue. Thankfully, my blue is dry. So once my purple is semi-dry, I'm going to be able to take my toothpick and just be able to um, very, very gently wipe that off. Okay, I'm going to take my toothpick again here. And bring back my white. So what I'm going to do here now, I want to add a little bit of fine detail in and around this very, the center ring. So I'm going to take my toothpick with a little, tiny little bit of white on it very carefully. And I go in between these, this first ring that I did. These blue dots just right in the valley between the larger dot that I did and that first ring. There, I've just created a little bit more definition in there. I'm also going to go in between those purple ones because I want to make sure that they're really standing out as well. So I'm going to take my toothpick again with my white. White is a really great connector color. Um, I've said that in the previous video about taking your one color for your fine details in between and it kind of just brings it all together and connects it. Also makes your colors pop a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to show you here. Hopefully my purple is dry enough. I'm just going to be able to very, very lightly Remove that little tail of paint that popped in there. And if your paint's not quite dry enough, it's going to smudge it. And if your paint's too dry, it's going to be hard to rub off. So it's really uh, a fine balance in between the two to just kind of make sure, keep an eye on it and see where it's at. I may need to just take my toothpick here and just add a little bit more of the blue just to okay we're gonna let that dry okay so I want to take my blue again and I'm going to take my tool that's one size up from my toothpick because I just see in here I want to add a little bit more color and a little bit more especially when you're working on clear glass 
kind of want to have those fillers in there. So I'm just taking my blue and going in between those bigger dots. Okay, so the last thing that we're going to do for this one is put that blue dot that we have here into the center of my purple one. Now that my purple one is nice and dry. You really want to make sure your layers in between are dry before you're adding another layer because it can bleed and your top, your top dot is not going to be as perfect as you want it to be. So there we have it. Well, there you have it. Our wine glass is complete. So you can have it with the, with the words or with the little mandala in the center and um, both are equally as lovely, I think. So for curing, what I do is I put um, my glasses once they fully dried. So make sure that they're fully dry. Otherwise, you can um, increase your chances of getting these tiny little um, air bubbles into your dots, which is it's not fun. Once you've put all the time and effort into um, creating it, you want to make sure that it cures properly. So um, I put my glasses into a cold oven and I set the temperature for 350. And once the oven reaches 350, I set the timer for 30 minutes. Once uh, 30 minutes has um, come and gone, then I turn the oven off. I leave the glasses in the oven and I let them cool in the oven with the oven. So this could take, you know, a few hours um, by the time, but I would just leave the door closed and let the oven cool down, let the glasses cool down all at the same time. Um, you could risk shattering it if you're bringing them out or messing up the paint if it's um, it hasn't fully cured. So this is kind of that curing process. Um, once the oven is cooled and the glasses are cool, then you can take them out and then you're good to go. These are, these are fully cured. Um, again, hand wash or top rack, top rack dishwasher safe. Um, and that's, that should be it. If double check on your paint though, because if you're not using deco art or folk art, you're using a different type of multi-surface paint. There may be different curing instructions. So you just want to make sure that you're following, um, the instructions that are on the paint. Um, I, tend to only use folk art and deco art paint. That's kind of what my experience has been. So I've always done the same curing process for um, both brands of paint and it's worked really, really well. So enjoy your painting, enjoy your glasses, enjoy sipping from your amazing, um, beautiful works of art and uh, we'll see you next time.